Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to CCXRC. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Axial 124 scale power wagon and their dual axle car hauler trailer that you can see right here getting loaded up with my B17 Betty limited edition with mud tires installed aftermarket. Love this thing. But we're gonna take a look at these new rides from Axial. They're pretty wicked. Uh, hard body on this guy, pretty cool. And then what you get with this trailer as well. They don't come together, they come separate, but they were kind of built for each other in some ways because it came ready to receive this hitch, but it also came with the amount for you to be able to install this onto other vehicles as well. That and much more coming for you guys. We're gonna show this on the trail as well. Give you kind of our perspective of the driving of it. Already been on the trail, already got the footage. And so I kind of know how it's gonna go. So. I got a little bit of insider knowledge. That's what's going down. Let's do this. All right guys, quickly looking at the box here, you can see the Proline Super Swampers, the worm gears that they use for these. I like worm gears, easy to overdrive, easy to work on. Comes with the overlanding rack and accessories you can put in the back as seen here in the photo, as well as a few other little accessories, but screws, ladders, got shock clips here to uh, be able to adjust those. So if you like to add that kind of stuff. Got your manual. One of the cool things to point out in the manual is this little card that they give you here with a uh, little support thing and upgrades you can get. But it's pretty cool. I hope that they keep doing this with all of them. It'd kind of be fun to have a stack of these for all the different SCX24s that you have. But I think that's pretty cool. First things first, let's go ahead and get rid of the Betty. You don't get to get one of those. They don't make them anymore. You can buy the bodies, paint your own, do that kind of stuff, but you cannot buy it. I think the thing that we'll start with here is the trailer. And we just sent the ramps flying off the table. <laughs> I'm gonna get them. So that was a good time to talk about these hideaway ramps that do come with it. They are tucked up on the inside here, like so. They latch in. You can see it's got like a cutout right there. Back it. And uh, flat side's gonna go to the top and they'll slide right in and you'll be able to lock it in place. You can see there's a groove for it to kind of latch it in place, keep it from moving. And there's little tabs on the side, you just flip those down. This one is really annoying because your light comes out right here. I don't know why the light couldn't have been moved. I don't know, it's kind of annoying. It barely goes up enough because hitting the wire to get it out. Um, but at least that's how it is on mine. It may not be on everybody's. You can see the axles running under here, metal axles. That's nice, four wheels and tires do have Feels like there's foam in them, but pre-glued, nice, just right up on it, nice flat design, right up over the wheel wells, and it's got the little ball hitch right here, just snaps on. You can see it does have wiring here, so you can take this and pull all of this out, and if you're gonna leave your trailer hooked up a lot and just only drive around with it, Something you could do is, if you like lights, which I don't, you could take the time to wire all this up through into your auxiliary port on the front of your truck. Go in the bottom two, that looks like we did it. And then we'll turn it on, and voila, we have working lights in the rear. So if that's kind of your thing, and you love having lights, you want to see them up front, like that, and then also on the back of the trailer, um, it is doable. So that's just a quick little look at this fitting on here. We've just been putting the 24 scale other axials on it, and uh, they fit pretty well on here. We're going to go ahead, I'm going to detach this, and I didn't do it the hard way, so it's easy. So just prize on there. It did actually come with this hitch that is pre -in that is installed now on my um, power wagon that was on this piece here, 
So that's where that was. And uh, yeah, so we went ahead and you just pull this pin and this is the power wagon little plate that was on it. And so we just removed that so easily. If you wanna take it on or off, cause you're gonna go trailing now, it would be really easy to remove this. But I like that it does come ready to use with this. So we're just gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and get it back to factory. How's that? And then this is what you're gonna get from the factory with your trailer. You can slide this up in between your chassis rails up in here and mount it like so in there and then you'd be able to have it it would replace kind of this mount there so that's what it's used for if you want to use it in other vehicles comes with that so now i've got to redo all my wire stuff here so i think that's kind of back to square one that's the trailer quick look at it here's the artwork for the box if you want to pause this Take a look at it, you can do that. Now on to the power wagon. The power wagon has a little flip down gate here. Not sure why, um, I guess it's kind of cool, but it's not really open when you do that, but that's a feature. It is a hard body and these are molded mirrors. They do kind of break away if you hit stuff, only one direction. And then these are also, the heads on these are on a little, feels like a swivel a little bit, maybe. No, they're just flexible. So, but all these are molded, molded. Looks like I broke this one off already on one of my tumbles. So that came off. Door handles are molded. Um, looks like you got some nice buckets here you can put maybe some lights into or something if you want it on the rear. They feel kind of like they're gonna come out. I hear moving. Uh, so there's two drivers in here. One has his hat on backwards. One has it on the right way forward. I guess there's not a right or wrong way. One has his hat on forward. One has it on backward, but two little dudes in there. Uh, it is running. One of the coolest things is that it is running these awesome Proline super swamper tires. We like these in general. Um, especially I I'll probably take mine apart, reuse the tire. But uh, this is a, a very fine tire and we use it for a lot of stuff. I will probably put some of my inserts into them and vent them and continue to run it. I plan to leave this truck pretty stock. I think it looks fantastic. And so that's why I bought it. I didn't need another SCX24 uh, to build into another comp crawler. I probably will just use this one for towing the trailer. I'll be honest. It's got the trailer mount on it. Um, I'll do a little bit of driving with it, but it'll be pretty much a stock truck. But as far as a stock truck goes, one of the nice things is these shocks have oil in them and it doesn't bounce around as much. I think this still has stock shocks in it. We can kind of show you. Um, yeah, it's much more bouncy. So when you're driving, it just kind of bounces around. This one is much more um, plush, it's still not a lot of travel, especially once it's set down, but you can actually feel it when you're just holding it and you push it in, you feel the difference quite a bit from the stock ones, which have no resistance. There's no dampening in there. It's just a friction shock. These ones, you can definitely feel that they're just a little bit slowed down and they, you have a little bit of resistance from that. And they feel good, whatever weight they got in. See the truck just settle when you set it down? That's really nice. Um, I'm kind of curious how it would be without the springs on it. I'm kind of a anti-spring guy on these little guys because we're not. I'm not usually driving around where they're bouncing. However, with the trailer, it probably makes sense to leave the springs on this truck. But, all right, so let's talk about some of the stuff. It has working headlights here, again, molded. Um, the tinted windows are nice. Again, this is a hard body and it looks really, really good. Um, talking about the fairing and stuff going around the side, these definitely hang up on things. They have decent clearance for an STX24. So many of them 
came with such big tires that the clearance was so bad. And these ones, they actually fit to these tires quite well, especially in the front here. They're not rubbing so bad when you're actually out and driving. Love that. Molded front here. I mean, the front of this just, it looks so good. Let me see if I can turn these lights off. Is there a button? No. Is there not a button to turn the lights on and off now on this new radio? I'm not seeing one. I'm seeing speed controls, steering reverse. There's not even a throttle reverse. You've got your steering trim and a steering rate. Not a whole lot going on with this radio. So let's take a look at this radio really quick. This is the SLT2. Feels great in your hand. One-handed drive, super easy. Really like it. Uh, kind of a bummer. Again, little things. If you've got a lot of, a lot of RCs, luckily they've got these little two front pieces so you can set it like that. But takes up more room, I feel like, than if it were to be able to stand up upright. But it does lock itself in place pretty good using these two little feet, I guess, that are right there. So that's how they have it set up to use. Again, um, I, I guess it's nice because I can name them on the bottom and see them that way. I don't know. Uh, just something I'm noticing. I'm just looking at this kind of on the fly with you guys. Bumper hit stuff. Like all bumpers do, this is a big one. <laughs> this is a big bumper. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off just so you're not being blinded by lights. Um, yeah, pretty good sized bumper. They did tuck it at least a little bit on the sides. Man, I wish they had really trimmed it down. So here's kind of what I feel like about these. Um, I, I really like some of the upgrades and stuff that Axial is doing. It's, they're not the best performing lineup out of the box for a mini crawler anymore. Um, however, most of them aren't 24 scale, I guess in the actual, what I would really call 24 scale, these smaller sized ones, there's really not a lot of competition. Definitely better than the Element or the RGT ones that were out um, or um, Panda, Hobby and different ones. Still the best in that regard. Uh, everybody's gone a little bit bigger than this. This is still, in my opinion, the best size. I like the 24 scale size. I prefer it personally. I know that it takes a little bit more for me to get them to perform. However, they did add some performance things that we do add anyway nowadays. These tires are something that is a performance upgrade already installed. Oil-filled shocks is a performance upgrade. My identity theft is running stock, stock shocks on a long chassis like this for the Gladiator, and it does really awesome. I mean, I really, really do well with that truck. I think that having these shocks actually on the identity theft would even be even better to have the, the stock or the oil-filled. So I'll probably look at getting a set of these to install on that um, because I like everything else about how it's performing. And you get decent enough articulation. It's probably two and a half, three tires, which again, for a lot of what we do is just fine. That's probably about three. But um, yeah, so overall on those fronts, it's okay. It does tip a bit with the weight of the top and it just wants to go over. So you don't have a whole lot of side healing before it wants to go, especially if you get things a little bit off and you're steering and you turn wrong, it's gonna roll over. It happened to me quite a bit. Out there, I know my course pretty well. It did decent um, for not knowing how this truck would handle. It did, it did all right. Uh, would brass down low help? Of course it would. Um, it would definitely plant and counter this weight on the top. Do I love the look of this and gonna keep it like this? Yes. But, so the things I will upgrade on this is I'll probably put a new motor in it. We're gonna stay brushed. I'm gonna probably change the servo. There's a, you know, a few things. So they're, they're giving us upgrades, which is nice. And they're keeping the price about the same, considering that they gave us basically a $30 set. If you were to get these um, ready to go, that's a bonus on top of what is normally in there that you'd have to buy. The oil-filled shocks is probably you know, a $20 upgrade, $15, $20 upgrade. However, um, the motor, you know, I feel like that's a simple thing that could be fixed, just getting a little bit bigger motor in these to give it a little more power. 
uh, more of the torque and uh, then the servo. But those are definitely going to add some uh, price increase. I'll also kind of comment that it does have a servo saver on it. Um, I don't understand that for the crawlers. And I, I get it. I guess it's for <laughs> warranty reasons uh, for them. It probably helps out. That is something, again, that I will get rid of. And I will end up putting in a little bit bigger servo. But not a lot. I'm not going to do a lot to this. I'm going to put in a baby Goliath motor right here that we sell. Um, and have made to be kind of what I like as far as slow crawling torque speed. And it's a direct drop-in fit to fit with this uh, transmission plate and not have to move them and all that. So it's already got the holes ready. And uh, the only thing is sometimes the motor is in reverse, which is problematic with these radios that don't give you a reverse. Um, but all you really have to do is uh, pull the two wires. So when you change the motor out, you'd have this out. And uh, it's as simple as, ooh, that was coming apart when I was pulling on it. Lifting these two pins and pulling them and switching the wires into which side they go into. Super easy. Takes about a minute and a half to do. It's not bad at all. Uh, I just thought this was coming apart. Uh, let's take a look at some of the new things under the hood. Spectrum branding. So we're seeing their 2-in-1 10-amp ESC, an RX receiver. Uh, and then you've got the Spectrum batteries now, 30C. And what are these running? Still three, 350 milliamp hour. So, um, yeah, branded over to Spectrum. Still an axial servo in there. So they've, they've kind of moved a couple of these things over as far as naming convention. Still a dynamite motor. Um, I wonder if there will come a day where maybe we'll see a Spectrum motor and maybe it'll be a little bit longer can. Um, it's not like a super expensive upgrade to do that in my opinion. The servo is going to be more of the expensive part to change that out if they're going to upgrade that. Um, but, you know, I don't know that it's necessary. It's pretty inexpensive and it's, it's kind of like you're buying a truck that you're getting to do some upgrades to. Uh, but they, they did a lot of the good ones. Tires, shocks, um, and then, you know, at this, the next point is really what you want to do with it. So this is like your starting point with these. And I think it's a decent starting point and then you build. But um, definitely they're making them more and more capable out of the box. I like that. Um, and you can really make these 24 scales super capable if you're willing to spend the time and money to do it. And uh, you can make them, I think, quite capable. So some of the, the best handling rigs, at least for the competitions we do because they're so narrow, they're so small, they can fit through gates easy and um, they're just an awesome, awesome, fun thing to have competitions with. But for people that just want to play around with them on cool courses in your house or on the rocks in the backyard or whatever, um, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And if you wanted to tackle more and bigger things and not roll over as much, that's when you start adding some brass diff covers, brass steering links, um, you know, just some weight down low, and uh, you'll definitely get these things performing super good. So. I mean, overall, I like the direction they're going. I really like the look of this power wagon four door. Glad they did four doors. Everybody's doing power wagons. So at least it's a little bit different take on it. Hard body, we'll say it does use like a hook and loop kind of attachment here for the front. It also kind of locks in there a little bit into this chassis just because of the way that the, the flares here in the front are, which I should point out. That is nice. That's a nice touch that they've added here. So you got little wheel wells in there that the truck really kind of sits in and kind of locks it in place. Looking up underneath, you can see the paint <laughs> for the outside of it. Not all of it got painted. So if there's some parts that are missed, you can see if you want to remove your interior, you can do that. Same basic wheelbase as your uh, Gladiator. And um, so if you like long wheelbase stuff, it's going to help with climbs, things like that. You might high center a little more, but uh, I've been super shocked at how well my identity theft truck does uh, with the long wheelbase and still turns. I'm still able to turn it really good. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a shocker for me. Weston definitely knew what he was doing when he built his truck that I copied. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, I'm going to get this thing switched back over. Like I said, super easy. I'm going to pull this pin and we're going to pull this right on out of here. Take our hitch. This is going to be our, our hitch 
truck i will say there's a huge nut on the bottom of that so if you're trying to do actual <laughs> climbing with this and stuff later it does get hung up on things because it, it definitely makes it stick down kind of low um, but you can see right here we're just going to run this little clip through once you get it lined up it'll show through there's a hole bam there we go now i can back up this we can turn our truck back on a little on off switch on the side there attach our trailer just snaps on there put our truck on for now and we'll see you guys later